What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a step-by-step -step set of operations. Algorithms perform the calculation, data processing, and automated reasoning tasks. Algorithms are essential to our lives. Algorithms run everything from car navigation systems to credit card data security. Why is algorithm knowledge useful as a data scientist? By understanding a large range of algorithms, you will be able to choose the right one for the problem. This will enable you to, to efficiently solve the problem. One of the most important aspects of an algorithm is how fast it is. It is often easy to come up with an algorithm to solve a problem. But if the algorithm is too slow, it's back to the drawing board. In this lecture, we're going over common problem categories addressed by algorithms such as sorting, matching, searching, and machine learning. Many different algorithms have been developed for sorting. Sorting is, is a common task for algorithms. Let's talk about bubble sort. How does bubble sort work? Let's look at an example of six numbers to be sorted, which each round of the algorithm, the largest unsorted object bubbles to the top. To see how the, uh, this algorithm works, we're going to use to sort six numbers. Now, the bubble sort algorithm says to consider the object in pairs and sort them over if they are in the wrong order. I'm going to start on the left side here and work my way to the right. Now, the bubble sort algorithm says to go back to the beginning and repeat the process until the objects are in order. The algorithm stops when there is no pair to swoop around. So the bubble sort algorithm has successfully done its job. I've got all the objects perfectly ordered. The bubble sort algorithm is fast unless you have a lot of data. Then there might be better algorithms. The merge sort algorithm work on the principle of divide and conquer. It consists of two parts. The first bit is dividing the part that involves splitting everything into smaller groups. The groups are now merged back together. But as I merge the two groups, I compare the size of the numbers one pair at a time and the merged groups become sorted. Now the merge sort algorithm might rather look like the bubble sort. Where it comes into its own is where, when there's a large numbers of objects it is much faster. The third example is the insertion sort. Insertion sort is a simple sorting algorithm that builds the final sorted array one item at a time. Let's go over how it works. Initially, the sorted sublist contains the first element in the list. The sorted sublist is two and nine insert five into the sublist. Step three, the sorted sublist is two, five, and nine. Insert four into the sublist. Step four, the sorted sublist is two, four, nine, two, four, five, and nine. Insert eight into the sublist, and so on. So the final steps then are until the sorted sublist is one, two, four, five, eight and nine, and then insert six into the sublist. And now the entire row is sorted. It is much less efficient on large list than the bubble or the merge sort. Matching is another common task of algorithms. There are many matching problems and many algorithms to solve them. One example is the stable mar marriage problem. This problem is about finding a stable matching between two sets of elements. Each element has a preference for each other. Suppose we have an equal number of men and women. Every man lists the women in order of his preference and every woman lists the men in order of her preference. We would like to arrange marriages between the men and the women. Goal is that there are no men and no woman who prefer one another to their spouses. The gay shapley algorithm solves this problem. It involves several rounds with the following steps. 
Step one, every woman proposes to the first man on his list of preferences. Every man conditionally accepts a proposal from the woman he most prefers out of those who have proposed. He rejects the other proposals. Step two, every woman who is not conditionally engaged proposes to the man he most prefers out of those who have not yet rejected her. Every man considers any new woman who have proposed at this step and any woman he had previously accepted. He accepts the proposal from the woman he most prefers. That could mean that he is rejecting the woman he had before accepted. This process continues until every man has accepted a proposal. At this point, the conditional acceptance becomes final and the algorithm ends. This algorithm is used all over the world. In Denmark, to match children to daycare places. In New York, to allocate rabbis to synagogues. In Spain, to match students to universities. And in UK, to match kidney donors to patients. Processing it either by a two-way, a two- or three-way swoop. Searching is another common task for algorithms. The traveling salesman problem is an example of a search task. The traveling salesman problem asks the following question. What is the shortest possible route to visit among a number of cities exactly once and returns to the original city? A brute force algorithm trying out all possibilities is impractical. Here's why. For three cities, it works fine. There are only three routes. But what if you add two more cities to the list? With five cities, there are 60 possible routes. If we add another city, so we have six cities, there are 360 possible routes. And for 10 cities, there are over 1.8 million possible routes. The traveling salesman problem is an example of a search task. It is also an example for a, difficult to, for a very difficult uh, to solve problem. Many problems can be solved by developing explicit algorithms as shown in these examples. However, there are problems, like the traveling salesman problem, that are difficult to solve by developing an explicit algorithm. For those types of algorithms, data scientists are using data to optimize algorithms. These algorithms are designed through the process called machine learning. By feeding the algorithms data, it learns by example, devising its own rules. Data scientists don't develop the algorithm, but design the, trader, the, design the training data set. Data scientists use machine learning for tasks where designing explicit algorithms are not feasible. Machine learning is used to predict or categorize data. These models allow uncovering hidden insights through learning from historical trends in the data. Machine learning tasks cover two main categories, supervised learning in which input and output data is used to optimize the algorithm. The goal is to learn a rule that predicts outputs based on the inputs not included in the training data set. Examples for supervised learning is Netflix, movie preference prediction, or self-driving vehicles. Unsupervised learning is a method in which no labels are given to the learning algorithm. You leave it to its own to find structure in an input. Goal is to categorize or cluster the data. Examples for unsupervised learning include Google News Cluster or Google Automated Photo Tagging and Grouping. So let's recap. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step set of operations to be performed. Common problem categories addressed by algorithm include sorting, matching, and searching. Examples of sorting algorithm include bubble sort, merge sort, and insertion sort. Matching is, an other, is another very common task for algorithms. Gail Shapley algorithms solve the stable marriage problem of matching two sets of elements. The traveling salesman problem is an example of a search task. And machine learning is used on tasks where designing explicit algorithms is unfeasible.